Allen, this is Allen's Firearms, and Guns Plus More. And today we're going to talk about holsters and concealed carry. Now, the way I am dressed right now, it's okay during winter in Florida and in a lot of states, this is comfortable, very light jacket. Um, but during the summer here, it's impossible to dress like this. Just way too hot. We're talking about between anywhere between 85 and muggy all the way up into the hundreds. So you can't walk around with a jacket like this. But when I lived in New York, this is how I dressed. Always had a jacket on and I was always carrying. Now, that's an awfully big gun to be carrying. And of course, you saw how easy it was for me to get to it. One of the best ways to carry a concealed weapon is when you're wearing a jacket is a shoulder holster. It allows you to carry a big gun and it allows you to get to it very quickly. Though this holster is a pain in the butt to put the gun back in. As you can see from that's the gun side, you can't tell. I can button this jacket tight and you cannot see it. Okay? If I needed the gun, it's a matter of just going like that, that quickly. Now I'm going to show you what the holster actually looks like on. Okay, so there it is. Now the way this holster works, this particular one, is, of course it's on your shoulder. There is a stabilizing strap that goes behind you, but it also has this, this little strap that goes that loops on your belt to keep it down and against your body and you put it right in front of your first belt loop next to it that way it won't ride forward when you pull the gun okay so that's my first method of carry like i said it's a little hot in florida we mostly dress like this just a shirt and slacks or shorts so where would I keep a gun? Well, I have been wearing three this whole time. The one I just had on, which I just took off, my regular sidearm, which I have in this holster right here, which I can easily get to. And of course, I, so I spent a lot of time practicing that. I did tell you I had another one, didn't I, besides this one. I also have this one. Okay, so you, you can carry a lot of guns and no one even know you have them on. This is a Remora holster, which I really like and I'm going to get into. Because look at that. You cannot see that. Now this holster, this is a, what they call a paddle holster. So it comes off that easy if I want. To, you know how to get it off easy. But it, it just comes off that easy and goes on just as easy. I get up in the morning and pop it right on my belt. This one is the gun I carry when I'm not in the shop. And a lot of you know I picked up an RM380 and that's it. So this gun is what I carry when I go out on a date or I go to dinner and it fits perfectly there. This holster also doubles as a pocket holster. I can put it in my pocket. And now I have a holster. Now it's designed so it makes it look like it's a wallet. If I needed to, I can reach in and pull it and it's in my hand. And it's that simple. Here is another by Galco. That's the Remora. I'll go more into it later. This is a Galco pocket holster, which your firearm goes into. It kills the shape of the firearm while it's in your pocket. It also makes sure it stays in the right position. So when you reach in and you pull it out, it comes right out. It has a hook on the bottom of the holster, which as you pull it up, you tilt it. That way it grabs that hook and it stays in your pocket. Here is another paddle holster. It's all leather and the spring is real hard so it's hard to get in there. The, but what's nice about this holster, if I can get it on, what's nice about this holster is it's high. So it's easily covered. It's against my body. It keeps it angled against my body. It has a cool angle to it. It has a snap on it that, that locks the firearm into the holster, so I don't have to worry about running. And it, it's as easy as just pushing this tab and it unlocks it. The downside is it is high and it is up against your body. 
So you are going to get sweat and body fluids on your handgun. Not a great thing to happen. Here's another type of Cardex holster, which is the plastic, just like my Forbis holster here. This is made by Forbis. Now the problem with these holsters is it does put some wear on your gun, as you can see that. So I've taken this and put it in here many times, as you can see. And by the way, just so you all know, these guns have been checked and are clear. The shoulder holster I showed you earlier works on a spring system that holds the gun into place, by the way. I didn't give you a close look at that. It's got a nice leather band on the top. This is one of the more expensive types. Uh, if you wanted to buy a leather holster like this, you're talking in excess of $100. Uh, all the way up to $300 for the real expensive ones. The, uh, the, other, the other types of shoulder holsters... They hold the gun this way on the side, and they have a long strap that hooks to here. Not that comfortable as this. This has a big berth in here that has a lot of movement. So when you bend down, sit up, the belt moves within here. But it still keeps it stabilized. Uh, I don't care for those ones. Some of them are free swinging. You've got to know where your gun is. And if it's moving around, not so much. Here's an ankle holster. Well, first of all, you should always keep it on the inside of your weak leg. So, you're right and you're strong. If you're right-handed, that's your strong arm. Cross draw on your left leg, because that way, when you lift your leg up, you're keeping your center of gravity, and it's easy to balance. Trying to lift up the same leg that you're trying to operate on, you're going you're gonna to fall down. Ankle holsters are not a good way to go for concealed carry. It's for a backup gun. For those crazy, ridiculous situations that you may need a second gun um, and you're on the ground or something, they're fine. But it's it's to get an, to an ankle holster, it's next to impossible while someone's beating on your head against your car because they're rot mugging you when you're trying to get into your car. Remora holster is what I carry of these uh, sticky holsters. The reason I carry Remora instead of Sticky or uh, some of the others, there's nothing wrong with any of them. They're all good. It's a matter of opinion as to which one you like. I like selling these for three reasons. Miami Company, I get to do business locally. They have a lifetime warranty on their product. If it gets damaged, ripped, or worn out, they'll you send them in your yellow card with your holster and they'll send you a brand new one. And... I just feel it worth it. The, they're, they're made to order. So the, the quality of them is great. They don't mass produce them. They make them to, when I order them, and I order 25 to 50 holsters um, or more, it takes me three weeks before I get them in because they make them to my order. That tells me there's some craftsmanship involved. I know the owner of the company. I've met him. Nice guy. He is proud of his product. It works great. And I just love this holster. It is fantastic. I want to hit actually carrying your firearm. When you're using one of these holsters, the most important thing is consistency. Using the same type of holster all the time in the same place on your body. Yes, I understand sometimes you got to move it because you get in the car, it's uncomfortable. You move it here, you move it there. But basically, if you're wearing it on your side, always wear it on your side. Make it, that's your go-to point. Because if something happens, you've been practicing most of the time pulling it out from the side, lifting your shirt, pulling your gun out, grabbing it left-handed and getting it out in case your right hand is disabled. You're doing these things, and you're practicing it, and you're doing it right, and you're getting the muscle memory down, that will save your life. You're moving your holsters all over the place, your guns all over the place, you're not going to be able to uh, go to it in a snap. Now, if you're wearing multiple guns in multiple places and you're practicing all those places, hey, that's, that's great. If you can handle it, it's cool. But usually, consistency. That's the trick in self-defense. Consistency of what you do, how you do it, and your muscle memory. So when you're practicing drawing a firearm, you do it slow. And you keep doing it slow and let your body dictate the speed. Smooth, correct, and efficient will equal speed. The last thing I want to touch on is this. 
And I've had this argument with people. And the most of these people are what I call the video commandos. They watch all the videos. They hear someone who they like, and that's who they agree with. It doesn't matter how wrong that person was. They read articles. They read this. I, I argued with an ex-cop who was into the way the Israelis train their policemen in the way that they carry a gun. Makes no sense. We're not in Israel, and we're not policemen. We're civilians trying to protect ourselves from bad guys. This is what the argument was about. Clear. Do I carry my firearm, which is a pistol, with a round in the chamber? Of course you do. Otherwise, you're carrying a paperweight, a suicide stick. The reason you must have a round in the chamber on a pistol, whether it be single action or double action, is if you don't and you need to pull it in self-defense and this arm is busy holding away a knife or keeping a guy at bay or they got this arm wrapped up against your back or it's broken or you're, they already hit you with something and you blocked it and you snapped your arm. How are you going to pull the slide on this? You're not. You're dead. So, simple mathematics. If you can't do it with one hand, you ain't gonna, you're not going to be able to do it. You've got to be able to do it with one hand. A gun is for one hand to hold and shoot in self-defense. You may be able to go like this or like this. But you may not. When you carry a pistol, you keep one in the chamber. If you're not comfortable with that, then by all means, don't carry a pistol. Carry a revolver. Revolvers are great. The modern revolvers, you don't have to worry about them dropping and them going off. You don't have to worry about modern pistols dropping and going off. Firing pin locks. You have to literally pull the trigger in order for it to shoot. Or the little button on the trigger in some cases, like the Glocks. You don't have to worry about a pistol. Revolvers, the new, well, the new revolvers have also hammer blocks. So if the hammer gets hit, it's not going to go off. You have to pull the trigger a certain distance back for the hammer block to release before it fires. So if you're that nervous about it, carrying a gun with a round in the chamber, get a revolver. You can even leave the chamber against the firing pin and hammer empty. Because when you pull the trigger on a revolver, it's the next round that comes in. So you're good there. Don't want to carry a chambered round? Get a revolver. That's my opinion, and I presented my opinion based on facts that I gave you. If you don't agree with me, you're more than welcome to leave a comment politely, and we can have a discussion. But any hate comments will be deleted. I've gotten one or two over Chanik, and I had to delete them. I actually had to block the guy because he started using foul language. And this channel is not about that. This channel is education. And you don't have to agree with me. You're more than capable of being polite and disagreeing. And in that case, I leave the comment because a lot of stuff is opinion. I hope that was helpful. I think I'm going to be doing a series on concealed carry. And when I say a series, I'm talking about as if you were taking a concealed carry class, broken up in 10-minute video, going over each little law, like the Stand Your Ground, the Castle Doctrine, what self-defense really is, the difference between lethal force, deadly force, and the use of force. Believe it or not, some states, deadly force and lethal force are two different things. What forcible felonies are, which is in most states, that's when you can use a firearm. So I may be touching, doing a series on that. Love your opinion. Also, yes, like and subscribe, but we're about to hit a million views on my channel and 2,000 subscribers. And I think when I hit the 1 million views plus the 2,000 subscribers, I think I'm going to have some sort of giveaway for my fans and my, my community. So I'm going to come up with something, whether it's a Remora holster or uh, some other product. Um, we'll do something. No, not my hat. But we'll do something. <laughs> and, um, hey, that might be not a bad idea. I got some uh, Glock hats and stuff like that I can 
That way I can give a bunch of people a bunch of stuff. But if you got any ideas, feel free to put them on my channel. Until next time, Alan from Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More saying, Adios. I never say that. So this is Alan from Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More saying, Till next time.